Hello everyone, I am Smriti Sina here and today we are going to see some MCQs and basic theory part for NEET exam. The topic for today is IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. So what is the full form for IUPAC? The full form for IUPAC is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So they have given a common naming system for all organic compounds and we need to cover it. So let's start with some basic theory parts. We'll take an overlook from this theory part and then we'll move towards the practice questions. So first you should know how to name the parent compounds. So what are parent compounds that I will show you in examples for present you need to remember. If you have only one carbon in your parent compound, then it is methane. If you have two ethane, three propane, four butane, five pentane, six hexane, seven heptane, eight octane, nine nonane, and ten decane. So these are the basic things that you need to remember for the parent carbons. Next are the substituents, you can call it as, or you can call it as locanes, or you can even call it as branch. So if you have some substituent locanes or branch, you can use the following names, like methane will become methyl, ethane becomes ethyl, propane becomes propyl, and butane becomes butyl. This is in the case you if you have these as your branches or locants. Now we'll move towards the rules of IUPAC nomenclature of alkenes. So the first rule says that we need to select the longest continuous chain. So if you have any compound, you need to first choose the longest continuous chain. Like in this compound, you need to choose the chain in this manner. This is the longest continuous. Some people would like to choose it in this manner. And this is also fine because you have to see that in your chain, you have maximum number of carbons present. In the second example, if you try to choose the chain in this way, this is a wrong because in this chain, you have only four carbons. But if you choose the chain in the other way around, like this the way it is drawn over there if you choose it like this then you this way is correct because you are choosing the longest chain means the chain having maximum number of carbons like one two three four five six so this is the longest continuous chain so remember the first rule says that you need to choose the longest continuous chain now in the second rule you should know how to start the numbering. Once you choose the chain, the numbering is the next important thing. So in any compound, you can start the numbering from right or from left, but it depends that your branch or locant or substituent should get the lowest possible number. So in this example, which is, has been given over here, you can see the below one, we have started numbering from the right end, and a substituent which to which the carbon it is attached it is getting the number three which is the wrong way of numbering because if you start the numbering from left side you will see your substituent carbon is getting number two so your substituent should get the lowest possible number okay it means the carbon to which the substituent is attached should get the lowest possible number and that is the correct way of numbering the third thing you need to remember over here is that if you have too many substituents in your compound, then again, the numbering will start where your any substituent gets the lowest possible number. So if I start numbering from my right, I see that the first substituent carbon from right is getting four number. So I will try from the other end too. From other end, if I start numbering, I see that my first substituent carbon get number three. So numbering from the left is the correct way, while from the right is wrong because it is getting the maximum number. So once I have chosen the correct way of numbering, so I will just number it out. This is three, four, five, six, seven. Now, once I have given the numbering, 
I know this is my parent compound. So my parent compound is this with seven carbon. And I have told you seven carbon means heptane. So we have given the name heptane because it is seven carbon. Now talking about the substituent. CH3 only one carbon substituent that is methyl. Two carbon substituent that is ethyl. Okay, now which one you should write first? Ethyl or methyl? It doesn't depend on the number, actually depends on alphabet. Methyl starts from M, ethyl starts from E. So you have to go alphabetical order and therefore you will start the naming from the al lowest alphabet that is E. So it becomes now 4-ethyl because ethyl is attached to 4 carbon. So 4-ethyl, put an hyphen here, then 3-methyl. In between the letters and the number, there should be hyphen and then finally heptane. And it cannot be 3-methyl, 4-ethyl, heptane because M doesn't come before then E. So you have to place E first and, and then M. So it becomes 4-ethyl, 3-methyl, heptane. Next, if you have one or two or more than two substituents which are same, okay, in that case, you do not need to write methyl methyl twice. Suppose if you have in your carbon chain as substituent two methyls, so you do not need to repeat like two methyl, three methyl. Okay, just write two, three, dash, dimethyl. So di word for same two substituents, tri words for same three substituents, and tetra word for same four substituents. If you have ring in your compound like this, in that case, you need to count the number of carbons in that ring. If I have six carbon, then obviously it is hexane. So if I have six carbon, it is hexane. Okay, six carbon is hexane, but this is in the form of ring. So need to write the word cyclo. So it becomes cyclohexane. Now we go towards the IOPIC nomenclature for alkenes and alkynes. Till now we have seen for alkenes. For alkenes, the IUPAC nomenclature is this simple because it is the basic one. Actually, all rules over there are uh, applicable to all the other further functional groups. So it is a basic one. Now we are going to see for alkenes and alkynes. Okay, so in this case also, as usual, you have to first choose the longest continuous carbon chain that is the chain which has carbon carbon multiple bond because you know that alkenes have two carbons uh, okay alkenes have two double two bonds that is the double bond you say and alkynes have three that is triple bond so you have to choose a chain that is longest but it that longest chain must compulsory have a double or triple bond next you need to number the number in such a way that your substituent should get the lowest possible number and even the double bonds and triple bonds should get the lowest number. Okay, then if it is an alkene, then you have to name the parent compound by replacing any by any. Suppose you have a five carbon double bonded compound. So five carbon means pentane. But in now case, you have to replace your A-N-E by E-N-E. So now your pentane will become pentene. And similarly, if your five carbon long chain has a triple bond in it, so your A-N-E is replaced now by Y-N-E and it becomes pentine. Rest of the rules over there are seen. So we are going to see now IUPIC nomenclature for compounds having one or more than one functional groups. So for one or more than one functional groups, first you need to know that functional groups should appear only as prefix. Okay, some functional groups only and only uh, appear as prefix. They are never present as suffix. Means the naming system, whatever we use, before that you have to use these words. Okay, so if your compound has nitro group in it, so whatever naming system you are going to use, before that you have to use as prefix the word nitro. <coughs> if it has halogen in it, so before that you have to use the word halo. So if your parent chain is having fluorine, so it becomes fluoro and that 
whatever uh, carbon number is there suppose it has fluorine with three carbon number so it becomes fluoropropene okay if it has chlorine then chloro if it has bromine then bromo if it has iodine then iodo similarly for or you have to use word alkoxy if your or is och3 then it is methoxy if your or is oc2h5 then it is ethoxy next some functional groups even use prefix and even use suffix if they are parent they will be using suffix part and if they are present along with some other functional group then they will be also using the prefix part so these two things you have to need to remember for each one if there are multiple functional groups then you have to use prefix also for some and suffix for the parent one so let's start with the cooh it is for prefix carboxy and for suffix it is onic acid COOR for prefix it is alkoxy carbonyl for suffix it is O8 for COCl for prefix it is chlorocarbonyl and for suffix it is oil chloride CONH2 for prefix it is carbomyl and for suffix it is amide for CN for prefix it is cyano and for suffix it is nitrile for CHO for prefix is formyl for suffix is al for co for prefix it is oxo for suffix it is on oh for prefix it is hydroxy for suffix it is ol and nh2 for prefix it is amino and for suffix it is amine and if i have told you there are polyfunctional groups means more than one functional group present in the same compound now in that case to which one you should refer as the parent and which one you should refer as the substituent so if suppose according to this if you have acid cyano and triple bond all these three present in the same compound in that case your acid will be your parent compound so suffix of this will be used that is oic acid okay while cyano and triple bond over there will be as substituent and you will be using the prefix part for them okay so the sequence for polyfunctional group are like this first is the carboxylic acid then sulfonic acid then ester then acid chlorides then amide then cyano that is nitrile then aldehyde then ketone then alcohols then amines then double bond that is alkene and then finally alkyne and the least one is the alkene next iupac rules for naming the mono and polyfunctional compounds so in this case also you have to choose first polyfunctional means the group the compound which has more than one functional group so in that case also you have to first choose the longest carbon chain which has the principal functional group means the functional group which has the more weightage is the principal one and you have to choose the longest chain which should have this functional group and it will be said as parent chain the next one is that the parent hydrocarbon is modified according to this parent chain compound so the whatever will be the functional group principal functional group according to that in parent compound you are used to going to replace this suffix so as i have said that if your principal group is acid you are going to add the word oic acid next you have to name the other functional groups as prefix or you can say as a substituent so let's begin with the question answer session and in this the first question over here is the iupac name of ch3co ch ch3 twice is so the basic structure for this if you get such question in exam immediately first draw this structure so that you are not getting confused for numbering them as a longest continuous chain now start the numbering so in this case i have to choose a longest continuous chain i am seeing this is my functional group so i have to see that my functional group get the lowest possible number and so i will start numbering from this end 1 2 3 4 so i have four carbon compound 
so obviously the parent is butane but in my parent the functional mean functional group is the carbonyl so it becomes now or because it is carbonyl so it is not butane now it is butaone that is for the ketone so this is my ketone functional group so my ane is replaced by one so it becomes butanone now further see where is your substituent your substituent is the methyl and attached to carbon number 3 so it becomes 3 methyl butanone correct so it becomes 3 methyl and the butanone is at which carbon that also you have to define pr very properly so it becomes 3 methyl the, so the final name is like this so the first one is in capital 3 methyl 2 butanone so it becomes 3 methyl 2 butanone that is option c next the iupac name of the compound shown below is so you have some structure over here and you need to name this compound so what is its iupac name so let's see here in this case now you have to start numbering from where to start numbering you can see a ring correct so in this ring from where i should start the numbering so i should know that my this a uh, double bond should get a lowest possible number okay because that is the main functional group so that should get the lowest possible number my double bond so i will start numbering from this end 1 2 3 4 5 6 so i got a six carbon compound six means it is an hexane but now as i can see a double bond so my ane will be replaced by ene so it becomes hexene okay now to this hexene you have to see that where are the other all groups attached okay so in that case you have to see that it is like this now another thing is that if i have chlorine also and if i have bromine also with me so where should i do, what should i do here so that both should get the uh, proper preference okay so chlorine starts with chloro that is c bromine starts with bromo that is b so it becomes now like this according to alphabetical rule that b should be written first and then c so b should be written first according to that it becomes now 3 bromo then 1 chloro hexene so it is now 3 bromo 1 chloro hexene and the correct answer over here will be option c because it is 3 bromo 1 chloro hexene the important thing to remember here is the numbering you cannot start numbering from bromine because your principal group is alkene so you have to see that your alkene should get the lowest possible number in that case also i cannot start numbering like this one two like this this is the wrong method because my substituent is getting a large higher value but if i start the numbering like this then in that case my substituent or locants are getting the lowest possible number and therefore the correct way of numbering is this that is clockwise next the iupac name of the compound shown below is so now for the next example again you need to choose the lowest possible number and with longest chain the substituent should get lowest number but the longest chain now if i start numbering from here you see that your first substituent is getting the number 4 but other way round if i start numbering from this end so in that case my first substituent is getting the number 3 so i know that i am able to clearly see that this is my longest chain this is for sure but the numbering i have to start from right side so that my first substituent should get the lowest possible number so let's begin the numbering from the right side so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it is seven carbon compound so obviously it is heptane there is no other functional group present so heptane will remain heptane to the third carbon there is one carbon in second see this is carbon actually nothing is written it is carbon two carbons means it is ethyl 
and to the fourth carbon there are two methyls correct so which word will come first e or m so we know that e comes first alphabetically so first we will write about ethyl so it becomes 3 ethyl then we are going to mention about methyl see we have two same substituents so we and both substituents are present at carbon number four so we'll write it as four four because there are two substituents at four and now instead of writing methyl methyl you need to write it dimethyl and remember there should be no space okay so it becomes three ethyl four four dimethyl heptane that is option d next what is the IUPAC name of the following compound? So you have this next compound and you need to give its IUPAC name. For this compound, the thing is, now from where should I start the numbering? Because I have a double bond also, I have a bromine also. So remember, if I start numbering from this end, it would be like this, but my double bond is getting the number three. Okay, but instead of this, if I start numbering from this end, in that case, my double bond is getting number two. So remember, the double bond should get the lowest possible number because it is the main functional group. So my longest chain should have the double bond with lowest possible number. And therefore, here there is number two. So now in this case, the example which we are having, it will be, this is the correct way of numbering. And now it will be like four carbon, sorry, five carbon. So it is pentane. But as I have a double bond, so A-N-E will be replaced by E-N-E. And double bond starts with carbon number two. So it becomes like this paint to in. Okay. So I have five carbon, so paint, double bond, so in, and double bond at two. So it is paint to in. Now talking about these substituents, because we have here substituents, you can see we have not talk, talked about this CH3 and this BR. So this is methyl, this is bromo. So B starts first. So write first about the bromine. So it becomes four bromo and three methyl pent to E, that is option A. Next. The systematic name of this compound is, so they have provided you a compound, you have to just name it. Now, again, the question is, I have two functional groups with me. So which one should get the lowest number? So remember, OH is the principal functional group if halogen is present. So start numbering from this end, it is one, two, three. So I have now three compounds, okay? means three carbon compound. So three carbon means propane. But now I have alcohol as principal. So A-N-E will be replaced by a suffix O-L and that suffix at carbon number one. So it becomes prop one all. Okay. This is three carbon compound and at the carbon number two, you have bromine. So it becomes two bromo. So the name is two bromo prop one all that is option b okay so you can even write it as this this as prop one all or propol one so it is actually prop one all this will be the correct way of naming it next the iopic name of following compound is so you can clearly see this is the functional group aldehyde so for aldehyde, you know that your A-N-E of alkane is replaced by A-L. You have only two carbon aldehyde. So obviously the parent is ethane. Now your A-N-E is replaced by A-L. So it becomes the ethanol. Actually here you have to just replace E by A-L because in aldehydes only E is replaced by AL not the AN but in ketone AN is replaced by ONE so this is the difference between aldehyde and ketone you need to remember this so this is an aldehyde and this is this one is the ketone so in while writing the name of ketone you need to replace AANE by ONE but while naming the aldehyde you need to only replace E by AL so I am replacing the E by AL so it becomes ethanol Next, the IUPIC name of the following is, so you can see this is an ether. 
okay so for ether now how to name it for ether the naming system is little confusing so how to choose the longest chain because oxygen has come in between so remember for this case you have to see that either side of oxygen so on one side of oxygen i have only one carbon on second side of oxygen i have two carbons so wherever i have more carbon that will be my parent chain and the rest one will be the substituent for me okay so the more carbon is the parent and the less one is the substituent along with oxygen so the parent is two carbon so it is obviously ethane because it is two carbon so it is ethane so my parent compound is here ethane and now ch3o is my substituent so we have seen while seeing the theory part that och3 means methoxy so this is called as methoxy meth means one carbon oxy means oxygen and c2h5 is the ethane so it becomes now methoxy ethane here no need to write the number because you know that for your two carbon compound either this side you attach the och3 or you attach och3 this side both is one and the same that is one methoxy itself so no need to write the number over here next the iupac name of ch3 c double bond o o c 2 h5 is so draw this compound properly so you will get a clear idea of this so this is your actual compound okay now for this you should know that your this part actually is an principal compound which is called as ester so this is the functional group called as ester so this is your principal compound that is an ester and this is your now you can say that c2h5 is like a substituent to it okay so c2h5 is now ethyl because it is a substituent and this is your principal so in your principal compound you have two carbon so obviously it is an ethane but with this two carbon you have two oxygen that is for ester and it is called as o8 so now it becomes that ethionate okay so o8 for ester so it becomes ethionate and as substituent you have ethyl so it becomes ethyl ethionate that is option b so it is ethyl ethionate so you you have to remember the rules for ether and ester because they are little bit different than the normal one so for ether you have to choose on the oxygen either side and you have to say the longest chain where it is so that will be the parent and rest the small chain with oxygen will be the substituent in ester you have to see that to oxygen which end is attached to oxygen whatever is attached is your substituent and rest of this is your parent next what is the iupac name of this compound so for this compound you need to tell the iupac name for that choose the longest continuous chain now see so many ways to choose the chain 1 2 3 only 3 carbon i have got next way i will try so this is 1 2 3 4 because two carbon so four okay or i can go the either way out like this 1 2 3 4 so the correct way of numbering that is to find out the longest chain is either the green one or the blue one not the red one okay because green and blue both are giving me the same numbering that is four number that is the longest continuous chain so i will start numbering from here because the chlorine is attached to this so the chlorine attached to the carbon should get the lowest number and therefore i am starting the numbering from here so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 so i got my longest chain now see my substituents are this this and this four carbon is my longest chain so it is obviously butane here i do not need to change anything because it is normal butane okay because chlorine cannot be used as the suffix it is always as used as prefix so here it becomes the butane now to one carbon chloro is attached to two carbon methyl is attached and the two carbon ethyl is also attached so first you will mention about chlorine because alphabetically c comes first 
so it becomes now one chloro okay so it is one chloro then add two carbon methyl and ethyl both are present but alphabetically e comes first so it is two ethyl then two methyl and then finally butane so it becomes one chloro two ethyl two methyl butane that is option c next now for this again there is a confusion from where to start the numbering so to start the numbering here you have to see that your substituent should get the lowest possible number so if i start numbering from this end the problem is that that my at the carbon number 2 i have more number of substituents and that i am not getting the lowest possible number to that substituent so i can't start numbering from this end okay i can't even start numbering from this because this is not the chain which is like this you have for rings you have to say that your ring should be enclosed you cannot take the outer part in the ring and count it okay so your ring should be totally enclosed in that so you cannot start even numbering from here so i have to start compulsory numbering from here so that is one this should be two next lowest possible number if i give two here so this will get five that will be wrong so this is one two three four five so i have got a five carbon compound that is pentane but this is in the form of ring so it is cyclopentane okay now cyclopentane now to the first carbon there are two methyls so it becomes two sorry for, to the first carbon there are two methyls so it becomes one one dimethyl okay right it is a dimethyl but now to the second carbon cch2 cl is there this is called as chloromethyl this is a substituent right so cl is chloro and ch2 is methyl so it becomes chloromethyl okay so to the second carbon it is 2 chloromethyl now you can see clearly in the option 2 chloromethyl is only over here so it is clearly that this is the correct answer so it is 2 chloromethyl 1 1dimethyl cyclopentane so in this way even you can rule out the options to get the answer quickly once you know the correct way of numbering and if you see your substituent at the correct position so after this 10 questions you know that how to do that you have to put which rules you have to apply for numbering once you are thorough with your numbering part you can see the substituent are present at which number just check out for that number and that is your correct answer so this will be the trick for today to remember that how to number the compounds next now the give the iupac name for para chloro that is benzene c6h4 always is a benzene ring then c2 ch ch3 twice so first we need to draw a structure for this so let's draw the structure for this as i have told you c6h4 is benzene p stands for its para position so you know that if you have chlorine the next position to chlorine is ortho next to it is meta and finally you have a para position so this is the para position to para position you have a ch2 attached to this ch2 you have a ch attached and to this ch you have two ch3 attached so this is the compound which they have provided okay now we need to name it so how to name this compound now for benzene ring you need to start the numbering with this chlorine part first so this will be 1 2 3 4 so this is four carbon obviously this complete ring is called as benzene so name will be benzene itself you cannot choose this as a parent you have to choose benzene as a parent because benzene have six carbon and the above chain have only longest chain have only three carbon six is a greater number so benzene here is parent not a substituent so immediately as you know benzene is your parent compound you will see that only one option has the benzene as parent other all has propane so you are automatically your correct answer is option d without doing anything so this is a trick correct right? and now for one chloro at one position you have chlorine so it becomes one chloro at fourth position you can see you have the some kind of substituent 
So at fourth position, you have substituent, but to this substituent at this carbon, second carbon, you see methyl. So it becomes four two methyl propyl because this propyl is attached to the fourth carbon of benzene. So it is four propyl. But to this propyl in between methyl is also there at second carbon. So it becomes one chloro four two methyl propyl benzene. Next, give the IUPAC name of the following. So let's start numbering. But if you start numbering, you will notice one thing that from where to start the number. Because in both cases, the problem is where from wherever I start the number, one halogen is getting the lowest number. See, if I start number from here, chlorine is getting the lowest number. And if I start numbering from here, bromine is getting the lowest number. So both way is correct. So which one should I choose? So in this case, you should see alphabetically. So alphabetically B comes first and therefore my B should get the lowest number. That is the second way. That is the blue way is the correct way of numbering. So now for time being, this is the correct way for numbering. And therefore I will start my numbering from the right side. And now this compound is four carbon compound. Therefore it is a butane. Okay, to second and third carbon substituents are there. For second, it is two bromo. For this, it is three chloro butane. So it becomes two bromo, three chloro butane. That is option A. Next, IUPIC name for following compound is. When the compound in exam is given in condensed form, there are very means there will be more chance that you can do mistakes. So I will always suggest you that try to draw this compound in a proper arranged manner so that you don't get confused and you don't give the wrong numbering. So this is the correct way. Okay. Now, once you are done with this, so how to start the numbering? Obviously, you have to see that your OH should get the lowest possible number because here in this case, that is the principal functional group. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So I will start my numbering from the right. And this I have what a five carbon compound. Okay, is this correct way of numbering? So no, why? Because if I take a turn, I can see I have two carbons here in a chain. So I get the num longest chain as six. So my correct way of numbering is taking a turn like this to get a six carbon chain. That is the longest possible chain. So six carbon chain is obviously hexane, but I have OH. So E will be replaced by OL. Now this is at carbon number two. So it is two hexanol. And now at carbon number four, I have methyl. So it becomes four methyl, two hexanol. That is option B. Now, next, are you pick name for the following compound is? So for this, you should uh, note down the numbering way. Now, see, you have OH also. You have double bond also. So which functional group should get the lowest preference that is lowest possible number and main preference so now remember oh has more preference than the double bond so OH should get the lowest possible number so now the correct way of numbering will be like this one two three four five okay so it is a five carbon compound so obviously the word paint is going to come but if you see at the third carbon, there is a double bond. So it is three in and principal is the OL that is alcohol should be at the end. That is two all. So it becomes pent three in two all pent for five carbon, three car third carbon, the double bond starts. So three in and then the second carbon OH is there. So it is two all. So it becomes pent three in two all. That is option A. Next, give the IUPAC name for following. So just you can see there is a ketone group present and this should get the lowest possible number. So instead of starting from right, I will start numbering from left. That is one, two, three. There are two carbon condensed form four, five. 
So whenever you see this two, you have to write down there one more number because that both are in condensed form. Okay, condensed that means that CH2 is attached to further CH2. So this get three and this get four like this. So it is one, two, three, four, five. So you have five carbon compound. So it will be obviously paint. And as I have told you, your ketone should be noted down as ONE at the end. But your ONE as is at carbon number two, so it becomes pain to own. That is your option A. Next, name this compound. So name, you have to again name this compound. So draw this compound properly. It will be looking like this. See what I have done. CH3, CH3, CH is attached to C2H5, CH is attached to C2H5, CH is attached to CHO, and the other end it is attached to CH3. Now you can see our main functional group is an aldehyde that is this, correct? Now to that carbon you have to give always the number one. Whenever aldehyde is present, the aldehydic carbon get car number one. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five because two carbons so four and five both here i will give so i have chosen the longest possible chain of five carbon okay so it is obviously paint now it is aldehyde so al so it becomes pental okay now substituent talking about the substituent substituents are present at three and at two both are the same substituent so i will write as two three dimethyl because same substituent so two three dimethyl pentanol that is option b next the iupic name of the following compound is now again you need to find out the iupic name for this so whenever again if you see acid you have to always start the numbering from the acidic carbon so for aldehyde and acid remember they are always at the terminal end so whenever you see these functional groups, you have to start the numbering from that end only. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Again, if I give five, so it will end over here with five. But if you see below, there are two carbons. So mention here five and six. So six carbon is your longest chain. So it six carbon is the longest chain. So obviously the word there will be hexane. But as it is an acid, so it becomes the hexo hexonic acid. Okay, so it is hexonic acid now. Now, next thing, talk about the substituent. So you have substituents at carbon four and carbon two. Both are same substituent. So it becomes two, four, dimethyl, hexonic acid. That is option D. Next. The structure of methyl to methyl propionate is so you need to draw the structure of methyl to methyl propionate. So, as I have told you, that propionate means the carbon which has oxygen along with it. But this was your ethionate. If you remember in the last example, now we are talking about propionate. So, add one more carbon. So, it becomes now propionate. Now, to this propionate, there is two methyl, correct? So there will be propionate with two methyl. So this is the carbon one, this is two, this is three. So it becomes two methyl and methyl propionate. See, two methyl is attached to propionate side and methyl propionate means O to the oxygen also methyl is attached. So this is the correct structure. If you draw this structure properly, so you can see CH3 is twice attached to CH2, which is further attached to not CH2, it will be CH because two groups are attached over here. So now next it is C double bond O, O, CH3. So if you see this structure over here, you can clearly see CH3 twice is only in option C. So my correct answer over here is option C. Next, what is the name of following compound? So what will be the name for this compound? So start the numbering. Now from where to start the number? Because this is a benzene system. Correct. 
So in benzene system, you need to remember to choose the principal compound. You cannot over here use the word just benzene. The principal compound here is phenol. Okay, OH attached to benzene ring directly is not an alcohol, it is a phenol. So my principal compound is phenol. So the OH compound, OH carbon should get carbon one, then is two, three, four, five, six. You can even go clockwise, you will get the same numbering pattern because on two and six, you will always get a BR. Okay, so it is phenol and at two and six, you have bromine that is same functional group. So it becomes two, six dibromophenol so it becomes 2,6 dibromophenol that is option c next match the compounds given in column one with iupac name in column two so you have to do the match the following now let's see the column one this compound okay so in this compound if you start the numbering obviously you have to start from this end so that your alcohol OH carbon should get the lowest number, even your double bond. In this case, you know that always your OH is the group that should be, be uh, that should be the principal, not the double bond. Correct? OH should be the principal. But I cannot start the numbering in between. I have to go from a proper end. So I start numbering from here so that the double bond also get the lowest number and OH also. So if I do that, I see that I have a six carbon compound. Correct? And at it, this is carbon compound at first i have in at second i have O. so just go in option and see six carbon this is octa means eight carbon this is hexonic acid i don't have acids but i have here yes I, this is my correct so a is matching with the third so this is the way you can choose directly from options correct you have to not go for complete naming now for b if you see for B, you have to start numbering in such a way that your ketone should get the lowest number because your ketone is the principal. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is a five carbon compound. So obviously paint word should come. You can see in first it is octa, in second it is hexonic, and in fourth there is paint word. So this becomes paint to own because at the second carbon there is a double bond. So it becomes paint to own. And now talking about substituent, it is 4 hydroxy, 4 methyl. So obviously for your B, the option fourth is the correct answer. Next, moving towards the C. Now you have ketone, you have acid. But I have told you always, whenever you have aldehyde or acid, you have to always start the numbering from that end only because that is your pr principal terminal end. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, six. So six carbon acid, so obviously hexonic acid. So your C becomes second. And the last, obviously the D1 is the first, but still I will tell you, you have to start the numbering from this end so that your at least one double bond should get the lowest possible number. And then I see that I have seven carbon compound and Actually, this end also I have to number. This is the eight carbon compound, so it is octa. And you have three double bonds, so it becomes triene. Because you have three double bonds, tri and in for double bonds. So it becomes tri, that is option first. So A, three, B, four, C, second, and D is first. Next, match the compounds given in column one with IUPAC names given in column two. So you have to do again here, match the following. So first here, you can see this is an amine. Amine with only one carbon. So it will be methamine. So A is five. So A matches with your five. Not talking about your B. So this is again an amine, primary amine itself. NH2 stands for primary amine. So you need to remember NH2 is the NH2 is the primary amine, NH is secondary amine, N is tertiary amine. Okay, so you have to remember this thing. And according to that, you have to name it. Okay, so now see again, this is a primary amine with two carbon. So it becomes ethamine. So B is for first. Next is to this NH, there are 
two C2H5 attached. So C2H5 like this and like this C2H5. Okay, so there are two C2H5 attached here. So you can see this is an ethamine because two carbon with amine ethamine and one ethyl will be substituent. And this substituent is attached to nitrogen. So it becomes an ethyl ethamine. In the next again primary amine, but you can see benzene ring C6H5. Anytime you see this, so high Brahmanan. So anytime if you see C6H5, that will be always the benzene. And if you attach to that NH2, so it becomes ether, uh, benza amine. So benzene, benza, and NH2 for amine. So you can see your C here matches with the correct answer five. C starts uh, stands for three. C is for three, and your D is matching with the second one. Next, if you see this to the nitrogen, there are three carbon three carbon attached okay so now how to name this so one of this you have to take as principal so this becomes the meta amine and to this nitrogen two methyls are attached so it becomes to nitrogen it is attached so n and dimethyl meta amine so your e becomes now fourth so this way you can do the numbering and do the match and match the pairs Next is the assertion type question. So the first one is the IUPIC name of following. So they have given a structure. They have said that its IUPIC name is paint three in one ion and not paint two in four ion. Okay. And they have given the reason lowest lock and rule for multi -bond, multiple bond is preferred. So if I start numbering from this end, I see that my double bonded carbon gets number two, which is wrong. But if I start from here, at least my triple bond carbon get number carbon get the number one. That is the lowest possible number. So that is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. So I have a five carbon compound. Correct. So it obviously paint at first carbon. I have a triple bond. So one ion and three in so correct name is pen three in one in so our session is correct now talking about reason lowest locant rule for multiple bond is preferred so in that case remember yes so multiple bond should get the lowest number and therefore this way of numbering is correct so assertion and reason both are correct and reason is a correct explanation for your assertion According to that, your option A is correct, that both assertion and reasons are correct, and reason is a correct explanation for your assertion. Next question is this, in the following question, a statement assertion A is provided, followed by reason R, you have to choose the correct option. So the IUPIC name of following compound is, as you can see, this is an ether, correct? So this is an ether, now for this ether this side you have three carbon this side also you have three carbon so both is equal so how to choose now so you have to remember in such cases if you get both sides same this then you have to choose a proper way of numbering it okay so in this case it becomes this will be your parent and this will be your substituent, correct? So if you choose this as a substituent, the problem is again like this. If this is a parent, this will be propane, no problem, correct? So if this is a parent, this will be always a propane. Now, if this is a substituent, so how to write the name for the substituent? This is not possible. So in this case, now remember, this is your parent and this is your substituent. So this is your substituent and this is your parent. Okay, so the parent says that it will be becoming, this is your substituent, correct? So if it is a substituent, the oxygen will be shared by the substituent. So it becomes two propoxy, not ethoxy, it becomes two propoxy because you have three carbon here, then if you start numbering like this, so one, two, obviously it is ethane and at second carbon methyl. So it becomes two propoxy, two methyl ethane. Correct. So this name is wrong. Obviously your assertion is now wrong, 
but reason let's see so reason says that ether is regarded as hydrocarbon derivative of hydrogen atom which is replaced by group r this is correct so reason is correct that you have to follow the rule of hydrocarbon itself and treat the oxygen along with some group as a substituent so it is the correct reason but your assertion is wrong so remember your here assertion is wrong but reason of the statement is correct and according to that your option fourth is correct here and along with this we are ending with this session thank you and do not forget to like share and subscribe our channel please like and share and subscribe our channel